Oh, it was a rumor. Dude, what are you doing? Stop. <laughs> What's up, Fernando? What are we What's doing today? Team? What do we have here? There you go. We have a Mitsubishi. It's an Endeavor. Yes, sir. All right. Let's take a look at this bad boy. Okay, so what we have is a Mitsubishi Endeavor. Normally in the Endeavors, the radio goes right here, but they have heated seats. So because of that, we can't replace the radio. Well, we could, but we'd have to relocate those, and honestly, it's it's just not in their budget to do that. And at the end of the day, all they want is Bluetooth. What we're gonna do is add some Bluetooth audio to it, compliments of the iSimple ISFM23. So that has an app, it's controlled. We'll show you in the end, it's real cool. And then also, the other complaint is, their factory subwoofer is dead. So the reason why they want to replace the woofer is you can see here, see this shake like this? See that? Oh, peekaboo, peekaboo, hi, look at me, I'm a blown subwoofer. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that with this guy right here, this is a kicker comp. Um, this is a single two ohm driver. We're gonna use a dual four ohm driver so that we can get a two ohm mono load, give us the same amount of power, same amount of performance. We're also gonna go ahead and road kill up the hole so that we give it a fighting chance. All right, so Fernando went ahead and installed the unit. There's an app you download, it's called the iSimple Transit Blue app. What you do is you pick whichever frequency you want. You have three methods, you have on, off, and auto. Auto means that every time your phone gets in and connects to the unit, it automatically turns the unit on, so you don't actually have to go into the app or anything like that, as long as the app is running in the background, it'll automatically connect, so it makes things really nice. We've gone ahead and picked the frequency, yep. turn it on. Go back to the app and we select off. It'll go back to your regular radio station. So now you can tune it to any station you want. So there you go, there's your regular radio station. This is an FM modulator, so it hooks up via the FM antenna. We actually have an install video on this. <gasps> I know, right? But this is really great. There again, all they, they, they had two things they want to do. Get Bluetooth for their daughter, fix the subwoofer, mission accomplished, on to the next one. All right, I got to pan back on this one. This is a big boy here. Look at these things. I have a feeling I'm going to run into those. That looks painful. All right, so what we got going on is apparently the 4400s are just dropping like flies. We did one last week, we're doing one this week. The screen is dead. We're gonna pull it out, put in the new 491 here. And also, so all you guys with pickup trucks know that at some point, that light is going to leak. He's had this system for about four, four and a half years, and I guess that started to leak, and it leaked all over the top of his box. So his box is now swollen and falling apart, so we're gonna replace the box. Backup camera work? Yes, sir. Cool. Now this, like the one we did last week, had the older backup camera, so we put that cool noise filter on it so that it works. He has no steering wheel controls, so this one is done. We also replaced the box. There again with uh, a deeper truck box style. Let me show you his old box. So looking inside his box, you could see where it, it had already, yeah, it's it had come apart. See that, see that gap right there? It's, but this is all mold from it getting wet. The inside is cracked. Moral to the story, water is not Wood's friend. 
it happens. All right, on to the next one. All right, so we just got in a Toyota Camry. We're gonna do six new speakers in it. Now, what's cool about this is we're gonna use these guys right here. These are the Kenwood Exelons. These are a seven inch speaker. They come in coaxial and component. They come with all the cool brackets to mount into the Toyotas. So it looks and sounds awesome, but don't take our word for it. Let's go on a journey and put some new speakers in this car. So here are the two speakers here. Here's the Kenwood 7-inch mounted in its Toyota bracket, and here's the factory 7-inch mounted in its factory bracket. Now, of course, this one doesn't come out. It's all one piece. That's a neodymium magnet, so that's why it's so tiny, uh, as opposed to the Kenwood. It has a standard size style magnet in it. It does come with this foam so that you can marriage it up to the plastic just like this one. All right, so here's the factory 7-inch, and here is the Kenwood 7-inch. Hey guys, how is everyone doing today? A little later than usual, sorry about that. It's what we're gonna show you today. Is this is the tweeter that's in the dash. It's, well, the mid-range, it's in the dash. They don't come with any brackets for those, which is kind of a bummer. So what we're gonna do, uh, we've already made a bracket. This is a, a template of this. So essentially what you do is you take this, you screw it to a piece of plastic, and you router it out. So what we have here are two pieces of plastic that we've already cut to the right size. This is our cool template tape. I'm gonna go ahead and put two pieces of it on here like this. It's called lathe tape. So if you don't wanna get it from Mobile Solutions or some other place like that, uh, you can just pick up lathe tape. It's the same exact stuff. So you wanna set it up so the bearing rides on the top piece like that. Can you see that? Okay. Now we just need to make a straight line. All right, so at this point, you just have to make a hole for the tweeter. The tweeter is a little bigger than the hole, no big deal. Take your air grinder with your cool auger bit. Boom, there you go. All right, so there we go. We got two brackets for the tweeters, all set, ready to go. So here's what your factory looks like, and here's with your Kenwood in there. There's two screws that hold in place, and of course, a grill. To get the grill off, there's two clips in the front and two little slide clips in the back, so it just pops up like this. Slide on the same way, and then push it down. They're in. The front door is, even though it's the same seven inch, the bracket itself is a little bit bigger. Now, you could get the Kenwood to fit if you drilled new holes. To do it a little bit easier, Metro makes a mount for a six by nine. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So Metro makes these, the 82, 81, 49. And what it is, is a six by nine bracket so that you can mount a six by nine to it. Now in the box for the Kenwoods is a six by nine mount. So what we've done here is we've gone ahead and attached the Kenwood seven inch mount to the six by nine mount, which there again, this is, you know, if you wanna do six by nines, Go ahead, do six by nine. We're just matching the factory seven inch. So now this is the same whole pattern as this. We got foam on the back. We're gonna go ahead and mount the speaker in here, put the foam on the front. All right, so here's the front factory speaker. And here's the Kenwood. All right, like we said a million times before, make sure you face check your speakers before you put the door panels back on red red green now the dash can be tricky as we've said before because it can be bouncing off that glass but we got red red green so we're good there so we mounted all the speakers in we face checked them last part listen to them So all I gotta say is wow. So if you guys are interested in replacing your Toyota speakers, you want an awesome seven inch to replace them with, check out these Kenwoods. Awesome. Now we know not every radio is created equal, but if your radio has these when you buy it, packaging screws, it's not gonna last all that long. This is, yeah. What we have here is a Chrysler harness. When you buy a pack, this is the CHY4. It gives you both old and new harnesses. We're doing an old, so we'll go ahead and get rid of this. Now we're also doing an infinity system, I and mean, it's got the factory infinity system. And this is where a lot of people screw up, is they don't read these. 
And specifically, they don't read right here. Vehicles with a factory amplifier. This is important. Basically, what this is telling you is that the, the radio only outputs a left and a right. That's it. So two wires here, two wires here, nothing else. It does not have front. It does not have rear. It just has output. Now, that's great. But the problem is it is located on the rear side. So if you go and hook this up, you know, no big deal. Hook up purple, purple, green, green, white, white, gray, gray. And then you get it in your car and you're like, oh, this is awesome. It sounds wonderful. And you get a phone call and you don't hear anything. And you're like, hey, what the heck happened? Most radios only put out the Bluetooth phone calls through the front two speakers. Well, on this, they need to be here. And we've talked about this before. And like we say a million times, we do have a video on it. But how can you tell? How can you tell? Let's go into the car real quick. So first, a dead giveaway would be that logo right there. But not all of them have it. Let's come over here into the dash and we'll look at the plug. So what you wanna do is go ahead and plug this guy in. So if you'll notice when we plug it in, there's wires here, which correspond to these guys here. Now we'll flip it and you'll notice there's all these open holes where these wires here go to. So that's how you tell. If these are missing, this is what we call a four. And then if they were all there, we'd call it an eight. So when we're sitting out in the car, Fernando will say, hey, I got an eight. Or I'd say, hey, you got a four. All you have to do is hook the white and gray to the green and purple, and you're good to go. Now, if you want to be uber cool, you can also repin the harness, whatever works for you. So we only use the front output. So to demonstrate that, go ahead and go into your fader we balance and then fade it to the rear. And as you'll see, we lose the sound. There's no sound. That's because you're only using the front outputs. That's it, that's all you're using. All right, so it's the next day. Fernando, mm -hmm. what do we got going on? Sir, we got a lot of things going on. That's code for I don't know. <laughs> Hold on. So what we got going on here today is a Chevy Impala that has an existing set of speakers in it that only the driver's door works. We're gonna take those out and replace them with our types. This ought to be fun. Let's go see what Fernando wants. What am I looking at? Yeah, I, uh, it, you know, it has the factory tweeter location Right, right there yeah. on both sides. But then they decided to mount the tweeters in the door. Mm-hmm. Right there. Yeah. Which, you know, hey, I mean, why not? I get it. Find out why now we're again. Oh, oh. Do that again? Wow. Look at that. Oh, this frown is up. Wow, that sucks. But hey, they used the speaker spacer, so yeah. kudos to them. That's awesome. And they, look at, they just... So they just oh. smash the wire right there. Okay. So, huh. oh, who knows, man? So you guys know we get a lot of cars like this where like we're tasked with fixing or finding or troubleshooting or doing archaeology on them. And in this case, they used the right speaker adapter, but then they went and screwed it over the wire. Why? Why would you do that? It just makes no sense. I mean, you're asking, you're putting failure into your install. The whole idea behind installing is to prevent any failure from ever happening. Quality install, quality products. I mean, this is good stuff. It's just, why why, why put a chance for failure? It makes no sense to me. But hey, no problem. It makes us money, we're gonna fix it. Life goes on. You know, the metal is only about a sixteenth of an inch thick. I don't know why you would need to use two inch screws for that. All right, sometimes it's the simple things in life. And there we go, we have two simple speakers installed. We had to run new wires uh, because of the amplifier that they have. Uh, they had ran wires to it, so we went ahead and replaced the wire that they had. Now we're gonna put this back together. Fernando's still working on the doors. Fun. They ran the wires through the boot and weren't real cautious about it. They just kind of jammed it all in there without tucking it, so we got a cut wire. We're gonna go ahead and pull all that out and run new wires, just like we did in the rear. Times it's an archeology span dig.
for those of you guys on YouTube that weren't aware of this, we do a Facebook Live show every day. We do the one on Monday that we, we often pimp at the end of the, the shows, but we do one every day. So every day somewhere between two, we'll say between one and three o'clock, we go on and, and give you like a tip of the day. And that's what gets included in, in this. We have a little icon that appears like right here in the corner that says Facebook Live. We don't really, it just kind of transitions through it. If you want to see more of us, more interaction, more questions answered, more talky talk stuff, check those out. You, they're on our Facebook page, which we have, you know, the five star car stereo, facebook.com, whatever the heck it is. Yeah, there's more Dean and Fernando there every day of the week, except Sunday. But right now we're getting ready to shoot one. So here's some footage from it. Hey everyone, what we got going on today is we had a question uh, last night, guy asked, had a radio on his dash, and he thinks the radio, because he just swapped the radio, is draining his battery. That's a real common thing, believe it or not, is that people think that when they replace a radio, it drains the battery. So what we thought we'd do today is show you how to use your meter to test for a parasitic draw. Now, whether that's the appropriate term or not, I don't know. That's what everyone calls it. Basically what it is, is there's something on in the car that shouldn't be when the car is asleep. So what we got going on here today, we have our meter. You have to have a meter that has this guy right here. For example, this meter right here is totally different from this meter, which is totally different from this meter. This one, if you'll notice here, side by side, is missing this little hole right here. This is a 10 amp fused output, and this is what's used for testing to see if you have an amperage draw. Now this one is a little bit bigger. It has both for a small amperage draw and a big amperage draw. This is for a fuse that's internally. So what you do is you set your, your meter up like so. So you would take yep. and you'd move this one over to here. Yep. And now you're gonna take the red end, you're gonna disconnect the ground. You're gonna take the red end, put it here. You're gonna take the black end and connect it to the battery. Now you wanna make sure all the doors in the car are closed, everything's off. And what you're gonna see is this number here is what you're looking for. So what this is showing us is that we have 0.6 amps of current draw, which is naturally high. So that's telling us that there's something in the car that's staying on. Now typically you wanna wait about 20 minutes, which we're not gonna to do to see if this number goes down because you wanna wait for the car's computer and everything in the car to go to sleep. But we're gaming the system right now because what we've done to demonstrate this is we've actually turned on a dome light. Now what you wanna do at this point, if you've waited the 20 minutes and this number is still stupidly high, is go in and A, start unplugging things that you think are the problem. So in this case, you'd unplug the radio, the whole thing, and see if, wait again, and see if that number goes down. Let's say we just unplug the radio and the number does this, we know at that point that that radio is drawing a substantial amount of power and yes, that's what's killing the battery. Now, if the number didn't change, then we know that that wasn't the cause and what we wanna do at that point, you wanna start pulling fuses. Pop these guys right here and start pulling these fuses, these little ones first before you get to the big ones and see what is staying on at that point. Hopefully you'll get to a point to where this number should go down. That's not to say that it will because in some cases, some cars, they have bigger problems problems than a fuse can fix. At that point, you're gonna to wanna to seek professional help, both mentally and for your car, because you need to prepare yourself for a stiff fine. A big pocket. Deep pockets. <laughs> okay, so that's that's one of the many things as an installer, troubleshooter, basic knowledge on 12 volts. That's something that you should be prepared to try uh, or do if your battery's going dead, amperage draw. Now, it's only a 10 amp fuse that's built into these meters. You wanna make sure that everything is closed, shut, turned off, because these fuses in these meters are like 15 bucks. What you saw on mine, this harness here, believe it or not, this is you can buy this on Amazon. This has fuses in it here and then another fuse here to try to prevent you blowing the fuse that's inside of this. These are just standard automotive fuses so that hopefully you blow that first. Okay, so what we try to do, and I, I will have to add the meters on there because they're not on there, is at the end of all the YouTube videos, I do have links to pretty much Show all notes. the tools in, in the description. We put links to notes or links to tools as well as some of the install accessories that we use so that you guys can go ahead and find them there like the cool lights, strippers, crimpers, all the stuff that we show. We try to put Amazon links too so that you guys can find this stuff and make your lives a little bit easier. Hey buddy, what are we doing? Um, the power stop. Yeah? yeah? No way, another one of these bad boys? This is new in the Prius. Oh yeah, look at this, riding into a Prius. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So in case you guys didn't know, that big silver thing right there is actually the cool battery for the Prius that runs the car. Over here, in this little tiny corner buried way down here is actually the battery that you need to hook up to. Don't touch, touch. Looky, looky, what day is complete without an F-150 or a Jeep? And we have an F-150. It's got this cool dash that we're gonna go ahead and replace the whole dash on, which we have a great video on. It's funny. So what it's gonna allow us to do is retain the steering wheel controls. It's gonna allow us to retain, this one has a factory backup camera. It's gonna allow us to retain all this stuff here. It's gonna allow us to retain the USB down here. And it's a lot of fun. There's a box, this box right here. This is the factory backup camera brain. Now normally this brain is located up here using these two bolts and this bolt here. So what they have you do, it's attached to these two bolts here and then this, this one here. So what they have you do is unscrew it and then it moves down and then they, you can add a screw here to hold this in place. So they give you the camera harness, which is this guy right here. And then that matches this plug right here. So when you unplug this, this cable is going to plug into the cable that plugs into the screen. And that gives you your backup camera. So a couple helpful hints when building this kit. Make sure that you get these ribbon cables seated in all the way, the copper facing up on both sides as well as on the other end. Also, there's a tech bulletin out to make sure you check your ends to make sure that they're all, they're not uncoupled or falling apart. All right, so also when you're pulling this kit out, make sure that this guy right here is at 12 o'clock. Because what'll happen, you'll notice, is that the AC Max won't work. Now, what'll happen if you don't get the ribbon cable set properly is that the AC won't blow cold. And what you have to do for that to work is, of course, rebuild the kit, get them right, and then drive the car for 10 minutes in order for the computer to resync with the air conditioning controls. Lots of fun. Okay, let's turn it on and see. Go ahead and start it up. Actually, maybe don't start it up yet. Just turn it on. Hazards or turn tables? Okay. There we go, the car's gotta be running. So if you're trying to test for the AC Max and you're freaking out because you haven't started the car yet and you're like, what the hell's going on? The car's gotta be running. My bad. Of course, now you just want to check to make sure you have cold air coming out of the vents because that's that's key. If it's not cold, then, then you've got the ribbon cables wrong and you have to go back and reseat it and that's when you're going to drive the car for 10 minutes, like we said. But if we have ice cold air, 
We good. Ah, oh, so happy. Okay, so now what we want to do is move on to actually testing the radio. We want to make sure we got the depth right. Don't worry about that. Demonstration off, language, panel angle for sure. No, we don't want to do that. We want to front camera, rear camera. We want to go ahead and turn the rear camera on, guard yep, off. And then we want to enter customize. We'll go on top of the world, panel color. What do we got, blue? Blue white. Yeah, we'll go blue. Go back, go down, view angle. 15 degrees, mm -hmm. that's good. And then we'll go down again, we'll select finish. Test for audio. Now, the one thing to keep in mind, this gear, this gear is filled with grease and it's quite gooey. And even if you wash your hands, it just seems like it gets everywhere. So when you're done with this, just clean the kit with a microfiber cloth because there is gonna be a certain amount of like goo. Plus if they put armor all on their dash, it just seems like this kit is just attracted to fingerprints. All right, let's, now that we got it pushed in, let's go ahead and make sure eject works. All right, eject is cool. Did we test reverse? Perfect. So when you retain your factory backup camera, the dynamic lines do stay functioning on the new screen. Well, that brings it close to Tuesday. I can't wait to see what Wednesday looks like. Well, you guys will find out in about, well, now. And it's Wednesday. Wow. It's like it, like it just went by so fast. Just you close your eyes and the day go fly. Yeah. Okay, well, welcome to this edition of This Old Car Stereo. Yep, let's take a look. All right, so what we got going in today is the old kicker ZX301 and an Eclipse 4 channel. I don't know what closet they dug these out of, but they brought them in today to have us install them. And then the amp is going to power some old comps, the old comps that have like the, the little moon swish thing on them. And, and dude, I, I look at look at all this stuff on the, I mean. Yeah, look at this. Look at, it's a, it's a, it's a dead, yeah, that's a, yeesh. So. Apparently these are, these have been sitting somewhere. For a head unit, the cherry. we're gonna be doing this guy here. Obviously this is all the customer's equipment. We've been strategizing, trying to figure out how we're gonna fit all this stuff in this Toyota Matrix. Obviously we could just screw the stuff to the box, not particularly a fan of that. We've decided we're gonna go ahead and put them underneath the seats. Right now we're gonna go ahead, disconnect the battery, yank the seats, figure out what we need to build today. On this edition of Classic Car Stereo, let's get going. All right, so we have the toy it all apart. Let's take a look at it. So we've got both seats out. We went ahead and put a half inch spacer on this to lift it up so the other amp will clear it. There's plenty of room for that. We've got the radio out of the dash. The battery's disconnected. And we're just getting ready to rock and roll on this, but we have to do this first. And we have to do that one too. Shut up. <laughs> all right, so we've got a factory Bose stereo in here. Joy, digital air con climate controls, air conditioning. Looks like we're putting in a basic Pioneer CD player with some best kit parts. Let's see how fast we can do this one. Well, if memory serves, we just did one of these where we talked about the dash. This dash actually looks really nice. There's no cracks and anything like that. So we're gonna be really careful to make sure we don't actually add any. All right, let's get started. All right, and we're done. Awesome. Back to the Toyota. Let's 
so let's take a look at the progress so far we have the highs amp in and mounted all the wires are run everything is insulated we went ahead and ran the signal wire up this way and across and in and then we have the sub amp is in as well this of course is the seat and it's in the power wires going that way up and around the signal wires coming up the center console right now we're getting ready to work on the hole in the dash and then under the hood Fernando's getting ready to make his Fernando fancy fuse holder. So this one's gonna be just a basic L, something simple, because the battery is not actually, it's just kind of hovering in place. So there's a bracket right there that you can see. We're gonna go ahead and drill a hole, mount to that, and just kind of make, it's gonna come up, and then the two fuse holders will sit right here. Alright, so the fuses are in. Here we go. We got a nice simple mount out of the way. Everything's all insulated and tied up nice and tight. Two things we want information on if you guys can help us. Do any of you guys do a YouTube Live? And do any of you guys use Twitter? Add it into the comments for this. That would be wonderful. We want to know. Uh, do we need to be there? Do we need to be telling you guys on Twitter that, hey, look, this is happening. This is what we're doing. Do you guys feel like you need to know more about us? The other thing, too, is do you guys want to know stuff outside of this world? I mean, we know this is the car audio world, but obviously, do you want to know other things? You know, like, do you feel you need to be involved? Do you want to keep it sound man esque where it's just this building? Or do you want us to branch out like we have in some of the other shows? Like we went to graduation, we went to Disney. Does that stuff interest you guys at all? You guys going to run with Dean? Did you, did you enjoy the run? If you guys could let us know, either just, just type it in, let us know. We're gonna, we'll definitely, we want to know. Those two formats, are you guys there? Uh, which reminds me, if you didn't know, we passed 600 video uploads on YouTube. So thank you very much. You guys are making this all possible. Maybe we should have a dream sequence where we go back and look at the first video. Yeah, that would be fun. That'll be in. Hi, I'm Dean. Okay. Hola, yo soy Fernando. And we're with Five Star Car Stereo. And today we're going to open up some of the new Pioneer 2014 products. What do we have today? All right, so the radio's in. We got the center console back in. This Alright, this one's going into the history books. We're all done. We got the clips up underneath the driver's seat and we got the kicker up underneath the passenger seat. But no install will be complete without listening to it. So let's take a listen. It's going to be a fine night tonight. So earlier this week we put some Kenwood 7 inch speakers and a Camry. Here, these are the Kenwood x -Lons. Normally we don't see the cars back this quick, but he's back already for us to install a five channel amp. So we've gone ahead and removed the radio to see what we're dealing with as far as harnesses. He's gonna go high level. He wants to retain his factory radio. So what we wanted to do first is check to make sure that the factory radio was in fact the source of power, meaning it had no outboard amplifiers. And to do that, it's, it's fairly simple. Let me show you how. So we take our tone generator. So for this, Toyota is using its standard 1761 harness. That's these two harnesses here. And what you do is you take your tone generator, which makes tone, and you go ahead and put it in here like this. Do this. And then of course, the last. Now, you always wanna check all the speakers because some cars actually use the radio to power the front speakers. And sometimes there's an amp to power the back speakers or the other way around. So always make sure you check all four. Now, because it's Toyota's standard 1761 harness, that means we can make a T harness because he's doing high level because he wants to keep his factory radio, which I think I already said. But either way, let's make a T harness. Sound like fun? Yes. All right, let's go over to the bench. So to make this happen, we need two harnesses. We need a BHA 1761 and a BHO 1761. And what they are is reverse harnesses, meaning this is the same harness that's plugged into the back of the radio right now. And this would be the one you're gonna add if you're replacing the factory head unit. So what we'll do is we'll marriage these two up and this will give us the output from the radio to go to our high level to low level adapter. And then also the loop back in 
so we can hook up the power from the amplifier into this. Let's go ahead and solder this thing up and we'll take a look at it and you'll see what I mean when I'm done. Okay, so here we go. Let's take a look at what we just built. So this plug here is gonna plug into the back of the radio, and then the factory wiring harness is gonna plug into here. Now, the sound that comes out of the factory radio is gonna go into this guy right here. This is an LP5-4. Now, this is a little different than the seven. This one does not create the remote turn-on. And the reason why we're using this one is we really don't need the remote turn-on because we have the ignition wire in the bundle. We've just gone ahead and tapped the ignition for remote remote turn on. Now this here is going to be the output to the speaker. So we'll run our speed wire into this and this will go out to the, the stereo. Now this allows us to one, not cut the factory harness. And also if we need to take the amplifier out, it's just a simple unplug this, plug it back together and we're done. Your RCAs are gonna plug in right here and there you go, pretty cool. Nice clean install. So we're doing the 9605 Pioneer amplifier. It's a five channel amplifier. It has six channel input, but we're only gonna have four front and rear. So there's a couple things on the amplifier we need to go ahead and set up, particularly for the subwoofer, and that's right down here. So what it says is sub or AB. Now what we want to do is flick that to AB. What that's going to do is that's going to take a signal from A and B and create the sub input. Now if we just had two channel input, you have this input selector over here. This will allow you to just do two channel input. You can flick that, but we're going to have four channel. Now a couple other things when you're setting up an amp, go ahead and if it's going to be high pass, which this one is, go ahead and turn on the high pass, turn on the high pass, and then most manufacturers like to keep their gains. They don't come all the way down. So anytime I'm installing an amplifier, I always like to turn the gains down right from the get-go. And then as far as like crossover, uh, they usually come with the crossovers all the way down. Makes total sense. I like to just start with them at 12 o'clock. Um, that gives us at least something of a crossover. And from there, we can adjust once we get it in the car and we're listening to it. And or if we're going to do some kind of radio or crossover, whatever. At least it's a starting point so that when we power this thing up, there's at least some form of protection on there so that it's just not going to blow the speakers. Okay, so we have the amplifier mounted up underneath the seat as usual. Uh, we're finishing that up right now. It's a T-mount, so we're mounting it in the front and then we're putting also a mount in the back. Uh, the signal and the RCAs are running up here through the center console. They're zip-tied and clipped into the factory harness all along here. And then the LP54 is velcroed right here to the air conditioner vent, but we're gonna wait till we're done. What we wanna look at is these right here. We got all these plugs right here. All right, so here's our harness here. This is what's gonna plug into the factory, which is right here, so we can go ahead and plug that in. That's attached to the speed wire that's wrapped around here, and then this is gonna to go to the, this one, and this one here is gonna to go to the back of the radio. This is the plug that's gonna plug into our high level to low level. We're gonna leave that loose for right now until we get all this in there, and then we'll go ahead and snake it down. So on the back of these Toyotas, there's like a million plugs. So give me a second while I plug all these things in. Now I can tell you, when you're plugging in your, into the back of your radio with the aftermarket, they're not as well made as the factory. So they are a little tighter. So make sure you get in there and really push. We have our high level. Go ahead and plug that in here. Nice, simple, easy, usable fuse holder. There again, just added this, made a T, attach it to the factory bracket. Easy to service, easy to get out of the way. All right, let's take a look at this bad boy up underneath the seat. There you go, nice and out of the way. All right, we're gonna see where this factory radio distorts. We have our distortion detector. Go ahead, we're playing track one, we'll turn it up. All right, we have signal, keep going, keep going. Oh, red light, turn it down one. All right, so for the 40 hertz, we're looking at 53 on the volume. 53. All right, turn it down a little bit. Let's just go to 53 and see how we are. That's 54. 
All right, so it looks like 53 is where the factory radio clips at. So let's keep going. All right, so anytime you do a high level to low level, never taking account the stickers that are on the high level to low level. Sometimes they're wrong. So the best thing is safe practice is always check your four corners and make sure that everything is where it needs to be. Because nothing is more amateur than getting it in and left and right or front and rear are wrong just because you didn't take the extra two seconds to test it out. So when you're polarity testing, if we haven't said it before, you wanna make sure all the speakers are moving in the same direction. Whether it's green, green, red, or red, red, green, it doesn't matter. They just all need to be going in the same direction when you're testing. that brings this one to a close this thing sounds good it's high level not my favorite but doable all right we'll see you guys thursday have a good night enjoy the video